Hello everyone, welcome to Momentum IAS. Today, in this lecture, we are going to discuss a very small but a very crucial topic in geography, Western disturbances. We all know that India has a monsoonal type of climate. That means that the rainfall is concentrated within a span of 3 to 4 months and rest 8 to 9 months are generally dry. However, there are some exceptions to it and western disturbance is one such exception. So let's discuss this topic in detail. Let's start with what are western disturbances. Before this, I want to highlight some one point. There are two types of storm. One are tropical storm that generally originates in the tropical areas and other are extratropical storm that originate in the mid latitude area. Western disturbance, western disturbances are extratropical storm. This is a keyword here, kindly remember this. Extratropical storm that generally originate in the mid latitude area. And from there, it comes to northern and northwestern part of Indian subcontinent to provide rainfall, especially in the winter season. Again a keyword, it is a non-monsoonal precipitation. These key terms are very crucial for prelims examination. Non-monsoonal, extratropical storm. Now, since it's a mid-latitude storm, it has to gain moisture from some water bodies to deliver it to the subcontinent. In case of tropical storm, they are generally originated in the sea region, from where the moisture is adequately available. However, in case of extratropical storm, this is a, there is scarcity of moisture. So, the western disturbances gain this moisture from Mediterranean Sea, Caspian Sea and Black Sea. We will discuss this more in detail. Let's see, western disturbances develop in the mid-latitude region. They travel eastward through, uh, from west to east through massive ribbons of transfer which we popularly called as jet streams. India gets close to 5 to 10 percent of our annual rainfall from western disturbances. Let's discuss this with the help of a map. India is a tropical country that means India, uh, Tropic of Cancer passes through India and this region is the mid latitude region. Now the subtropical westerly jet stream takes moisture from Mediterranean Sea Black Sea and Caspian Sea and enters into the northern and northwestern part of the Indian subcontinent. Through this, it delivers moisture from these three water bodies to the north and northwestern part of the Indian subcontinent and brings winter rainfall to India. Around 5 to 10 percent of rainfall that we discussed earlier comes from western disturbances. Let's dissect this term. What do we actually mean by western disturbances? The word western that we have used here is in respect to India. There is a very interesting story behind western disturbance. This term was given by an Indian meteorologist in 1954. So he took India as a reference and the term western here refers to the area from where these storms generally originate. And the word disturbance here means the low pressure that generally brings a storm and from these storm, the moisture from Mediterranean Sea, Caspian Sea and Black Sea generally comes to northern and northwestern part of Indian subcontinent. Let's see what are the benefits. Now this is a typical diagram of the onset of monsoon to the Indian subcontinent. This is the Arabian Sea branch. This is the Bay of Bengal branch. Now, since here we have Western Ghats, so Arabian Sea branch is unable to penetrate to the Indian subcontinent directly. Therefore, majority of the rainfall that we receive comes from the Bay of Bengal. However, Bay of Bengal branch originates, uh, comes from the eastern side of the Indian coast. That means, till by the time it reaches the northwestern part of the Indian subcontinent, it has very less moisture or very less span of time. Therefore, this region generally faces a scarcity of water. These regions include some regions of Punjab, some regions of Rajasthan, J and K. This scarcity of water is fulfilled by western disturbances through winter rainfall. So that is the first benefit of western disturbances. Northwestern India don't get much rainfall from the Indian monsoon. Therefore, western disturbances during the winter season, that is again a key term, winter season from November to March provides rainfall to this region and uh, caters to the water scarcity of this region. 
सेकेंड राबी क्रॉप्स दैट मीन्स विंटर क्रॉप्स दे ऑल्सो गेट वॉटर अवेलेबिलिटी फ्रॉम वेस्टर्न डिस्टर्बेंसेस दीज टू आर वेरी क्रूशल बेनिफिट एज फार एज नॉर्थ वेस्टर्न इंडिया इज कंसर्न लेट्स अगेन मूव फर्दर नाउ वी नो दैट एक्सेस ऑफ एनीथिंग इज बैड एंड दैट इज द केस विद वेस्टर्न डिस्टर्बेंसेस ऑल्सो दैट मीन्स वेस्टर्न डिस्टर्बेंसेस वेन इन एक्सेस प्रोवाइड्स एक्सेसिव प्रेसिपिटेशन इन दिस रीजन some of the well known events like 2010 cloud burst in leh 2014 disaster floods in jammu kashmir region are attributed to excessive precipitation by western disturbances apart from this they also led to cloudy sky unusual rain and higher night temperatures in the winter rain, winter that generally sometimes sometimes not always sometimes lead to failure of crops also they also bring cold wave condition and the dense fog if you are from the northern india then you might have noticed one thing that our winters sometimes becomes very chilly and there is a very difficult condition of fog that one of the reason is western disturbances so that's it about the western disturbances now i want to discuss two questions one from prelims perspective and one from one from mains perspective let's see this question consider the following statements western disturbances are tropical storms originating in the mediterranean area bring sudden shower snow and fog in the northwestern india now if you look towards the second part we would be tempting to correct this statement mediterranean area bring sudden showers to the northwestern india however the key term here is tropical storms this is not correct these are extra tropical storm that originate in the mid latitude region that means this statement is not correct now comes to the second statement western disturbances help in the activation of monsoon in certain parts of northwestern india now prima facie if you think that uh, western disturbances might not have direct connection with the monsoon but this is not the case whenever we talk about climatology or oceanography for that sake uh, when we discuss climatology the phenomena are generally interconnected so in this case it helps this is a very broad term so yes western disturbances helps in activation of monsoon in certain parts of northwest india this is also a preliminary trick that you can keep in mind as far as geography questions are concerned that whenever there is climatic phenomena and there is possibility that the statement is very broad then unless and until you are not 100% sure that the statement is incorrect in majority of the cases it comes out to be correct so this is statement is correct that means we have to ask select the correct statement please keep these keywords in mind while attempting the prelims question so answer is two only so this was uh, as far as prelims perspective is concerned now let's come to the mains perspective because this is a singular topic and this can be asked anywhere in prelims or as well as in mains so the question is now this is a very simple question discuss the impact of western disturbance on the indian weather system now prima facie it looks a very simple and straight forward question and that is true but how you structure the question is what it is it's what going to fetch you marks in this case discuss the impact of western disturbances on the indian weather system there are two keywords one is western disturbances and other is indian weather system and what we have to do with it we have to discuss this phenomena so the approach to this question will be i want you all to attempt this question and then look at the approach approach to this question can be first we can introduce with what are western disturbances in the introduction and then we can explain this with the help of a map in geography question we have a very strong tool that we call as map like i explained in the earlier slides you can also draw a world map and can explain the phenomena of western disturbances from there then after introduction and explaining a little bit about the western disturbances you will jump straight to the demand of the question then what are the impacts on the indian weather system many a times a student commit this mistake that they diverge from the demand 
so for this you have to read question two to three times and then cater to the demand of the question so here we have to discuss the impact on the indian weather systems so we can arrange it in this way it can have positive impacts it can have negative impacts we have already discussed both the positive as well as negative impacts in the earlier slides positive impacts is that it can cater to the water scarcity it helps in the growth of rabi crops in case of negative it brings fog it gives cold waves and sometimes it brings hazard events like we have discussed 2010 lay floods kindly keep this in mind that you have to prepare two to three examples for value addition this will fetch you extra marks for example we discussed 2010 lay floods you can make a case study out of it and whenever such type of questions related to western disturbances are asked you can quote them in your examples and finally we can conclude this the impact of western disturbances on monsoon like we discussed in the prelim prelims question or we can conclude with the impact of the climate change on western disturbances this will show examiner that you are not confined your knowledge to the static arena but you are also aware with the contemporary examples as well so this was all about uh, western disturbances uh, for more such videos and for more such blogs as well as prelims and mains question you can visit to our website www.momentumis.com thank you